think I'm a little late. Sorry about that. Sorry, everybody. I'm a little late. Sorry about that, but uh, we'll uh, let people catch up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Great. Great. Isn't this a great mask? <laughs> hello there, Mary. My sister is the first one to say hello. Hi there, Mary. And Neil, my sister and my brother. Uh, Neil, Father Neil, look at this ma mask. You should have it. Isn't it fantastic? Someone had it made. <laughs> There's Katinka as well. Oh, that's fantastic, Jessica. Um, so someone had this made. They saw that, um, how about, uh, here's somebody, uh, Immaculate Iligabizi. Do you know her story of Rwanda in Rwanda? Anyway, she's a great speaker, great, great Catholic apologist, and uh, she did this for one of her priests. So someone thought, oh, we should have this. Anyway, I think it's great. Ah, okay. And there's a little um, filter in here too, isn't that fun? There's no filter in here. I was told there's a filter in here. Anyway, you put a coffee filter in here. It's kind of fun. So that I can drink coffee as well. No, just kidding. So that it filters things. Anyway, I love it. I think it's great. I could wear it down here too. Um, okay, great. Thomasville, Georgia. Hello there. All right, well, I, um, so today's the fourth Sunday of Easter and it's typically well, it's kind of unofficially known as Good Shepherd Sunday because we read from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, the Good Shepherd Gospel passage, if you will. And um, so uh, it, it's a great day also not only to talk about Jesus as our shepherd, but as he says today, I am not only the shepherd, I am the gate. You can't come in through, except through me. So come, follow me, come through me, and I will lead you to green pastures. So uh, that's what really our reflection today. Next year on this Sunday, that's when the, we'll get the middle of that chapter where Jesus really reiterates, I am the good shepherd. But today he said twice, I am the gate, the sheep gate. So it's kind of an interesting thing. It's easy to picture Jesus, of course, as a shepherd. You know, we have a lot of images and pictures and paintings of Jesus as a shepherd with little sheep. It's kind of another thing to picture him as a gate. But that's what he said, I am the gate. And uh, I open, and he doesn't, he doesn't exist to keep people out, but he says to gather all my sheep, all, my, all God's children into one. So that's what our focus for today, the Good Shepherd. I'm wearing um, my sheep socks. I'll try to show you. I'm also wearing shorts. I, was, um, I, was, uh, I rode my bike today, so that's why I'm kind of unofficial. I'm wearing a, a youth group shirt. I really like it. it is, it's from uh, the youth of our diocese, Amplify. They had a big thing, and on the back, be brave with the play on the A-V-E in there, Ave, just as Mary was brave, Ave, Ave Maria, it's kind of fun. Anyway, okay, great. So I don't really have a lot, I'm kind of running out of things to say, um, but, uh, but I'm happy to be with you, and I thought today it would be good. People have been asking, what are you, what are you uh, reading these days, or what have you been reading? I think that's good. Now you know I've, I've talked a lot about the Bible. Um, I love to read the Bible. I, we all should, I, I should say, we all should read the Bible more and more. So um, I'm trying to do that. I really enjoyed giving those little classes on the Bible because that it just reminded me again why I like this, why I, why I love the Bible, why I, I want to return to it again and again. So that's a good thing. And then um, I'm also trying to read a lot at night as well in the evenings. So just a couple of things people have said, what are you reading? So I'll tell you, I don't know, I hope you find it interesting. If not, change the channel. Yeah, I'm kidding, don't change the channel. Stay with me, just for a few more minutes. Okay, great. Um, the first book, I, I finished this a little while ago. It is Brian, I know it's backwards, but look what happens when I do this. Wait, please hold. Okay, I can't do it. Anyway, I don't even wanna try it because I tried it and I switched it and all of a sudden things turned green. So I don't know, please hold. Yeah, watch this. Really? I don't know if it's green for you, but it is for me. That's weird. I'm not, so now you can see things, it's right. But anyway, I can't even, so I'm gonna go back to this. I don't see your, I, I mean, I don't see your, uh, I don't even see your, your comments anymore. So now I'm really nervous. Okay, there we go. We wouldn't change the channel. Okay, thank you. But um, so I'm just going to leave it like this. 
And um, so the first book was, is, and I know you probably can't read it if it's backwards, but it's Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. Maybe you heard about the movie um, that was uh, of the same title just recently. Uh, the book's better, I think. It's really neat. It's about this uh, young lawyer's uh, attempt to find mercy and justice, especially with those who are, um, uh, who, are, uh, who are imprisoned and who are not guilty, probably, you know, but were either imprisoned or put on death row for many reasons. But one was not because they did it, he's, he's showing. And so he's helping to exonerate many people from prison and just to kind of open our eyes to to the injustices in our prison system. And um, it's just that there's some really neat stories as well. It's, this is what inspired our diocese to get involved with them, um, to get open up a house for people who are um, ex-offenders, either those who have finished their time or those who were released because they were found not guilty later on. So Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy. Um, this is a fantastic book for any time. Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis. It should be required reading for all of y'all, for all 232 of you and anyone else who watches. Um, C.S. Lewis did something like what I'm doing. During the Second World War, he had a series of radio talks, just again, to do this, just to kind of connect with people, to help to keep us united, um, especially in Europe, you know, at that time. And um, what he just said, he said, I'm gonna talk about what's basic to our faith. As a Christian and um, so it's really really basic and uh, just talks about it's an apologetic on Christianity on what we believe and why it's really really good mere Christianity CS Lewis there's um there's a quote I like a lot on uh, from this book that I put on my mirror in the bathroom and it says if I find in myself a desire which nothing on earth can fill the only probable explanation is that I was made for another world love that. If I find in my heart something that just nothing on this world, nothing on this earth can fulfill, the only explanation is I was made for another world, and that will fulfill that longing in my heart. Love it. That and much more. Mere Christianity. Finally finished this book. It's a thick book, but it's uh, about Chappie James. Chappie, I don't know, Daniel Chappie James. Um, he's a local hero of ours, in uh, a local person growing up here in Pensacola, and America's first five star, four star black general in the Air Force. Uh, so his rise from a, being a Tuskegee Airman to um, just you know doing a few things right at the end of the Second World War, but being very involved in Korea and Vietnam, flying over a hundred missions and even then going to Libya later on as a general and standing up to Muammar Gaddafi in his early years. Um, and and uh, just, it's really great. He's, his house is just right, couple, like not even a mile from here. I, I ride by it on my bike. Um, but anyway, it's really great. The, the best, so it's a great read. We're trying to name the, the new bridge, bridging Pensacola and Gulf Breach, Gulf Breeze, we're trying to name it, the Chappie or James, whatever, Ch Chappie, Daniel Chappie James Bridge. Anyway, I'm sorry, um, but the best thing is this little review, I wish you could see it, but it's backwards, I think. But anyway, right there, it's just great. Isn't that great? It says, a book worth reading. I mean, I'm sure you wrote more, but I just love that. It's a book worth reading. Now that's a review right there. Anyway, okay, a couple more. Um, I, I love to read on uh, books on uh, Pope Francis, um, especially since I, I met him and talked with him, and uh, now I share a vocation with him as bishop. Um, this is really neat. These are just uh, pe from people who know him, some, some of the, the bishops and cardinals and theologians, and they're just talking about his theology and his spirituality and everything. He really has the heart of a shepherd, um, just like all of our popes have had. It's just, so I like that a lot. It's called Rediscovering Pope Francis or Discovering Pope Francis. Okay, great. Here's another fantastic book, In Sinu Yezu. A lot of uh, the bishop, the priests here in the diocese are reading this. I know it's backwards and I apologize, but it's private revelations, alleged anyway, um, of Jesus and Mary to a Benedictine monk, recently actually. And, and all it is is page after page, Jesus is calling this monk to talk, especially to priests, he said, tell my priests, I want them to sit 
before the tabernacle. I want to console them. I want to teach them. I want to instruct them. I want to give them joy, actual joy. And if only they would sit with me, then they would learn from me. They would learn all they need. They're so worried. They're so stressed. And I'm reading it. I'm like, I, I am too. I know. And um, Jesus, we have to say allegedly, it's not yet approved, but Jesus says over and over again, please sit with me and I will instruct you. I will give you everything you need. So it's not just for priests, but it's really for all of us to come and, and contemplate the Lord in the Eucharist and let him lead us, let him guide us, let him fill us with joy. I love it. He said, there's, there's one, in one passage, he said, I don't want to just help people, help the priests to cope and carry their crosses. I want to give them joy. I want them to be joyful. And this life is joyful. That's from Jesus, allegedly. So it's really neat. Okay, great. Again, called Insinu Yezu, which is in the heart of Jesus. And it, it, um, it really, uh, it, it's what St. John did when he rested on Jesus' breast there. You know, it says, so he was resting in the heart or on the breast of Jesus. So anyway, great. And then, this is great. You know, there are magazines for everything. Love it. So did you know there's a magazine called The Priest? <laughs> So I get that, and uh, this one obviously ministry in a time of pandemic, and so it really gives us some, uh, you know, there's some. It's written by priests mostly, and others, but just it's good to get some ideas, of, of uh, some thoughts and and, uh, and uh, prayers and everything else. Even homily helps in the back. People always say, "Is there a cheat sheet? Do you have cheat sheets? What? Do you have help for homilies? Yep, look at that. It's a homily right there. So." Not that I use it, I, I look at it every once in a while and I get some ideas, but anyway. And finally, because it's not all serious, somebody sent me this, this little kid's book on the Four Horsemen of Notre Dame. <laughs> if you don't like Notre Dame, you would not like this book because it's all about Notre Dame and Notre Dame football, especially back in the 50s. Um, but it's fun. It's just, it's a little kid's book about Notre Dame football and the, the four horsemen and everything and what they did and how well they played and all that stuff. Like I said, if you don't like Notre Dame, and there are a lot of Notre Dame haters out there for basketball or football, you're not going to like this because it's all Notre Dame. Maybe someday I'll read it to you. Okay, great. So that was, those are just some things that I'm reading um, or have just read. Uh, I'm glad I could share that with you because people always wonder, you know, what, what do you do? What do you do with your time? What are you reading? So there you go. Uh, Great. I'll, I'll continue to do this this week, and so I'll see you if you wish to tune in and join us. I'll be here. Um, I hope you're doing well and uh, that you're, um, you're, you're staying strong and staying healthy and staying hopeful. I just spoke with um, a lot of our young people across the diocese, and we did a big video conference, and, um, and I told them, I said, we can't minimize this. This is bad. This is very challenging. This is something we, we who are alive have never encountered here on earth. But we need to admit that and, and grieve a little bit while at the same time then being strong for one another and remembering always that God is with us, that we'll get through it. You know, we, we want to hurry up and get, get back to normal as we say, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen right away. But it will happen and God, we will survive and we will be okay. So I will pray for you. I will pray before the Blessed Sacrament here after this video for you and um, for your intentions as well. Please pray for me, especially on this Good Shepherd Sunday. Pray for all of our priests. They're so good and so generous um, and so courageous. I really love those guys, our, our priests here and priests all over the world. So pray for our priests, please. And uh, pray for our seminarians and the many young people who are considering joining us. We've already accepted three this year and we have one to four more who want to apply. So that would be a really large class for us. We want more. We'll take all we can get. So keep praying, keep encouraging young people to consider a vocation to the religious life or priesthood. Okay. May God bless you. May God keep you safe. May God pour out his blessing, his mercy, his grace, especially his love upon you and your family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good night. Sleep well. See you tomorrow.